Finally, we have arrived at the conclusion of the narrative that began in Twin Fantasy, The Gun Song, off of the 2013 album Nourish Young Man. We'll describe this album as one that should feel like a greatest hits compilation, full of songs he wrote from the age of 17 to 21. That, of course, would involve the period of time in which Will was in the relationship outlined in Twin Fantasy and Monomania. But this time, instead of devoting one last footnote of it to a whole other album, he condenses it into one incredibly lyric-heavy 16-minute ballad that dives deeper into the relationship and gives the story a sense of finality. Before we dig in, however, I'm going to do some classic YouTuber shilling and mention that there are two videos that come before this on Twin Fantasy and Monomania. Please go watch those and also like 80% of you who watch these videos aren't subscribed like genuinely and I don't make money off these videos until I'm at least at a thousand subscribers. So yeah, uh, subscribe please. The song opens with the line I played at the start of the video. Rule seems to directly address his lover in a section subtitled the lyrics as what Joe said. Joe would later go on to be an alter ego or alias of sorts that we'll use on the future project Teens of Denial. So it's safe to say that this is just a stand-in for Will, who claims to no longer be hung up on the relationship, but then proceeds to take the 16 minutes of the song to go very in-depth on why he hung up on them, either literally or figuratively cutting them off. That toxic idolization of unhealthy codependency Will showed on Twin Fantasy rears its ugly head once more as he sings. Behind every great love story lies a great you can't give yourself completely and keep the man inside. Will claims that in every deeply powerful romance, a sacrifice must be made. In order to know each other on an extremely intimate level, you have to destroy yourself. Give yourself away to them. This is, of course, toxic. That's not a healthy relationship. This is exactly what happened on Twin Fantasy, though. Will tried to give all of himself to someone who was not interested in doing the same and was left with just a shell of himself. With these lyrics, we are again called back to something that came up a lot on Twin Fantasy, discussing his inability to properly express himself. This was most evident in Bodies, where Will tripped over his words in the lyrics and found issue with trying to speak his mind. Here, he makes the act of tripping over his words akin to climbing sentences, getting halfway up and realizing his mistake, trying to backtrack and tripping over his words. The unending realization that it's never gonna end I spend half the day exhaling and the other half holding my breath. Will thinks that this feeling will haunt him forever, trapped in a loop. The realization that the feeling is unending is also unending in itself, a sickening feeling that never leaves him alone. He's unable to take a moment to himself, to take a break spending half the day exhaling his breath and the other half holding on to what he has left. This transitions us right into the next section, where Will claims his love lives underwater where the sun never sinks. Cause living underwater was never my strength In the depths you reside, the sun never sinks So let's float to the bottom for one final drink There's time for one more tonight this again fits right into the sun metaphor from Twin Fantasy and Monomania. Here meaning that where his ex resides, the truth never reaches them. It's time to forget while the forgetting's good. I'll burn all the promises I carved out of you. They need to put it all behind them. Forget it all. Especially Will. He promises to try and forget all the things he wanted from them, the things that he thought he deserved. The promises that he made out of their woods, meaning the things that they said to him that he interpreted as promises. Passing bits of conversation that he transformed into sacred oaths to stay by his side, or something along those lines. He also says carved because woods kind of sounds like wood. I'm sure he's real proud of himself for that one. Thanks, Will.
This section calls back to the smoking metaphor that has run through this whole narrative. His ex's smoking habits being a metaphor for their self-destructive tendencies and behavior. And, and enabling them in this behavior left marks on him. I think this passage bears a striking resemblance to the twin bruises lines from Famous Prophets. In this next section, Will says he should have listened to his parents and not entered a relationship with this person or smoked them out. And for the record, that means he used his own supply to get his ex high. Which is sort of a metaphor for how much he feels like he gave to them, and how he enabled them. After this, he references all of this as an artificial limb that he'd hate to amputate, comparing the relationship to something fake. But a dual meaning here lies in that since he's amputating it, it's attached to him, taking the place of something he's missing, like an artificial limb would. As much as he doesn't want to lose this piece of himself, the light from his eyes is drained when he looks at them. His eyes being glass points to his warped perspective, or maybe even just the idea that he can't seem to have faith in his own perspective. This relationship and this person seem to drain him so much, yet he can't just let go of it. Yeah. Before I get into the like deep meaning of these lines, I just want to hand it over to this guy on Genius because I would have not like caught the sexual innuendo in these lines. Like I don't really love that just takes it straight from Genius because I feel like that's cheating. But if a line stumps me, I will check. And I don't know history stuff, so I check for this line. Just, just shout out Brew Bumble Baby for this one. Wow. But anyways, besides and sort of part of the sexual innuendo here, these lines go a lot. He never kissed them on the mouth. Somewhere romantically intimate. I think it's implied a lot on Twin Fantasy that they hooked up some number of times, but never entered an actual relationship. This line speaks to that, and onto the history reference that I didn't really understand until I looked at Genius, holding the North means his lover didn't do much work, but conquering the South is what takes all of the effort, which is what Will put into the relationship. And aside from the clear, again, callback to the sexual connotation, Will calling himself a masochist also means more broadly that he enjoyed destroying himself for this person. If you remember the first verse, he seems to consider it a necessary part of love. <laughs> Will digs into the north-south sexual metaphor a bit deeper in the next few lines, not wanting to cause a fight and meeting at the edge of the bed. The sexual action that happening while in bed together could be a metaphor for the lack of real connection behind them, and they meet just at the edge of the bed, which probably both satisfied and confused Will, because he can project that there's something deeper like he did in Twin Fantasy, creating a whole relationship in his mind with this person, but he also definitely wants something more real. So the moment the line is crossed from fantasy to reality is where the issues in this relationship arise. He knows that the only way he'll ever know if they truly love him is if they do it in their sleep. Continuing another metaphor from Monomania, where sleep was used lyrically as a way to convey where someone is at their truest form, and sharing sleep being a deeply personal and intimate act. But also at the same time here, he calls out a little bit of his own neurotic behavior and flaws, acknowledging that in order to please his wants and desires, there will always be another angle, some new way to show him that they love him. Even if Will doesn't manage to kill this relationship, things won't just go back to the way they were before. Will is clearly deeply damaged by everything, and this person's supposed shortcomings are documented in his music and in his memory. He refuses to be toyed with again, comparing toxic behavior or something of that like to chord changes. This subtly adds onto the motif of using music-related ideas like lyrics or singing to talk about poor communication from bodies and misheard lyrics. If you're wondering why I'm still willing is still willing to take the fall for all of this, for everything to stay one-sided, just so we can have the tiniest bit of affection. He, as set up at the start of the song, believes that this pain is a natural part of relationships, but as the song goes on, his bitterness towards this person grows, and the romanticization of that idea starts to break down.
Will has played his part. He spilled his mistakes out over and over and is going to hate himself for them. His ex, he feels, hasn't done the same. Will is holding on maybe just for that. Some closure. Or maybe an admittance of those mistakes so that they can finally be together properly. The chance that this cycle, this unending realization that'll never end, can maybe finally come to an end. Will finds it hard to discuss everything that happened between them because of how set in stone their current situation is. His ex has ownership of how everything affected them, and Will sees it fit that they can drag him through the mud as much as they want, but what happened between them still happened. It doesn't just not matter because of how things are now. And if they want to blame someone for the fact that what they did together isn't public domain for them to control the narrative of and do whatever they please with, they'll have to blame Disney for extending the copyright law, which Will famously hates. These lines are all sort of ironic, though, as at large, Will really controlled the narrative about this relationship through his music, an issue which he later addressed in the re-recording of Twin Fantasy. A video on that coming soon, by the way. Subscribe if you want to see it when it comes out. I remember I was walking around outside talking to you. This verse here, probably being my favorite in the whole song, all ends a quick flashback in time. Time when they both attended parties alone. When they were still connected. What was sat outside, avoiding the party? And he looked up to notice the moon. Then, borrowing a line of poetry from Margaret Atwood, thanks to Gen Genius, he used to do assure his love that they had something they could still share while apart. But unlike him, they weren't avoiding the party. They were inside. The connection Will thought they had even when apart was not there. Their connection was, as it always has been, and still is, much closer on the physical level. And, um, quick little editor aside here, I just realized while editing this video that uh, he points out that they have a connection by the moon because it's the opposite of the sun, and that means that the connection that he feels isn't real, like it would be if it was the sun, which represents reality and truth in the narrative, so that's why he points out that they have a connection by the moon. I don't know how I missed that until now, but I just thought of it. The differences between them have been laid out, and Will is ready to finally try and let go of all this one last time. He'll go on trying to love someone else again, always looking for someone else to cling on to. And his ex can just live alone, move on without needing someone to live with. And as if bound together by some higher power, connected on some deeper, unforeseen level, they will meet in the end and compare notes. Look back on their lives again. Maybe For the first time throughout the whole saga, Will lets the other side of the story come to the front. 
singing about himself from the perspective of his ex. They hated Will's receptionist, feeling judged by them, unable to speak to him, a metaphor for being unable to get through to Will, being shut off. They're able to see that he's there, be around him, but every time they attempt to get through, he pushes them away, possibly judging them, begging for their love from his side of the story, but closed off from theirs. If you felt some kind of stirring against interpretation, why write these songs at all? This is really the first time Will acknowledges the existence of these songs within the work, breaking the fourth wall for a moment to criticize himself through his ex. If he didn't want people to interpret his songs, why write them at all? If he didn't want people to draw conclusions about him or his partner, why put that work into the world? All of the work, including the song, is shredded in vagueness, conceptuality, and metaphors. It's easy to misunderstand what he means and interpret it wrong. I also think this brings us back one final time to the connection Will draws between music and communication. Why close himself off and put all these feelings into songs? Why have that receptionist? Why not just learn how to be open and properly communicate with people? Tell them what he wants, what he is, how he feels. And after this, Will's ex gets one last moment to have a perspective on the song, bringing us back to a line from Beach Life and Death, and promising to eat him softly. This dream while he doesn't even notice it. And then... The song breaks into a sort of duet, Will with himself, but switching between the perspectives. His ex asks to be held close one last time, knowing Will is going to commit murder. The murder of this relationship, based on the fact that he's taken advice from Lady Macbeth, who in the play advised her husband to commit murder. He's encouraged to get on with it. Just one shot, two shots, then it's out of his hands, and he can try and forget it all. Move on. <laughs> compares his ex to Mariam, wife to Herod the Great, who was executed on the grounds of treason by her own husband, who later came to say he regretted his decision. Through the reference to Macbeth before and Mariam now, Will expresses his worry that killing off this relationship will end in disaster. Macbeth's advice by his wife led to tragedy, and Herod forever regretted his decision. Well, knows that in the end, one of them has to kill the other. At first, it was an idea perfectly reflective of the toxic relationship, Will destroying himself to become one with someone else. But now, it means the end of things. If you love someone, you have to be able to let them go when things get bad. It's difficult, but it must be done. He almost doesn't have the strength to, giving them his new number, leaving the door open. But this is the gun song, after all.
Thanks for watching. Um, if you'll notice, the audio quality in this video does sound better than in the last two. Uh, I posted a rant showing that I was using my microphone wrong this entire time. So that's fun, and that's why it sounds better now, because I've been doing it right. And I'm, what's going to happen is, um, okay, if you're still watching, subscribe, by the way. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-record the audio for the first two videos, re-edit them, and I'm going to put Twin Fantasy, Monomania, and the Gun Song this version of the video probably all into one big, like, one big over an hour long video. And it'll be, it'll be uploaded on the channel again so I can get some more views and do the version of the video with better audio quality. But other than that, um, I'm sorry for, like, not uploading at all this month. Uh, yeah, but um, I'm still working on the curriculars video, I promise. Um, that one's definitely coming out, like, probably January, maybe February. If I, I might want to talk about a few other like music related stuff first so that my channel doesn't just seem like Parsted Headrest and Crow Killers and anyone who's not interested in those things just screws off. But I want to do more music related stuff. Um so yeah, um consider this video a early Christmas present, I guess. Uh that's it. And uh face to face video will be the unofficial conclusion to all this because it won't be part of the narrative. It'll be just discussing the like themes of the album and stuff like that. But yeah. Alright. Um thanks for watching. Yeah.